let's check this um the Vebula direct of 2024 Four studios. Four unique games. Coming to Xbox. Are these games going to be Xbox exclusive or are they going to be available on the PC as well? Last year, the only game that caught my interest was um, Without a Shadow, Without um, Hi Fi Rush. So we have Ninja Theory, Machine Games, Obsidian, and Oxide. Alright, let's see what they got Obsidian Entertainment. Let's see what they got. Welcome to Obsidian Entertainment. I'm so proud to share with you our upcoming fantasy action RPG, Avowed. Avowed is an adventure into the heart of the living lands, a frontier at the edge of the known world, where you must put a stop to a mysterious spiritual plague and discover a secret at the heart of the living lands. At Obsidian, we love creating worlds with deep themes, dynamic gameplay, and thoughtful reactivity. And Avowed is no different. We yeah. set out to blend the believable and fantastical to give players a world and experience like no other. It's colorful, it's vibrant, it's strange. It's one of the most incredible settings in the world of Aora. There's going to be a lot of great secrets to discover, one of which has a really personal connection to you as the player character, and you're going to have a great time getting to know those secrets and leaving your mark on the world. And when it comes to encounters, our combat brings the best of the moment-to-moment oh, -moment fun um, that comes with action-oriented gameplay and view. the depth and breadth of choice that you get with an RPG. Here to talk more about Avowed's combat is Gabriel Paramo, Gameplay Director. Here at Obsidian, our team's overarching goal is to empower you with choice. So we developed a flexible I combat system can handle... that allows you to quickly okay. swap from spellcasting and sharpshooting to melee combat. We want to give you the freedom to mix and match your loadout to fit the way you want to play from moment to moment, uninterrupted. For all battles, yeah, it's a, you can it's combine a, it's a, a variety like of like weapons, it. attacks, and abilities for tactical advantages against a wide range of enemy types. It's not just hacking and slashing. You're making real-time decisions about when to use your abilities, powerful melee attacks, blocks, parries, and special attacks. If you choose to approach combat with a one-handed wand, it feels quick and snappy when dealing damage to enemies at mid-range. Using the Tanglefoot ability, you can stop enemies yeah, in their lengthy. tracks, giving you the opportunity to focus on weaker or tougher combatants in an intentional and controlled manner. It's important to pay attention to the types of enemies you're dealing with. Some units are extremely defensive, some it are brutally the difficult, of the... and others you must make sure you prioritize or their healing capabilities will put you in a tough spot. To, my, to help with the different encounters you will face, we provide customizable my... loadouts that can be quickly switched during combat. That means you can play however you want. Equip a sword and shield and charge into battle. Dual wield pistols yeah, and control the encounter mid range. Like, or even dual wield wands to feel like a gunslinging mage. You could use your enchanted wand to freeze enemies, and then use your offhand weapon's power attack to shatter them. We've worked hard to keep you constantly engaged as battles unfold by creating a balance between pressure and manageability during combat. Please, all right, Players will have ample choices for how to build and progress their envoy in the world of the living lands as they get to know the game and the story and explore the many diverse regions. Some quests in Avowed will have you make difficult decisions with profound consequences. Like this side quest you may 
encounter in Shatterscarp, the third region you'll explore on your journey through the Living Lands. As you're exploring, you come across the bodies of these fallen soldiers. And as you explore the remains of the battle, it's up to you to determine who, if anyone, is at fault. Just the four of us. Manu, Kiri, now Did she be say thought? Training on the D thought? Trying to keep the airborne safe. In other words, you're a gang of vigilantes. Not that I'm one to judge. Here. I'll take my badge. And take everyone's. Our families deserve to know we fought and died for them. Making the right choice isn't always what it seems. We embrace moral nuance and gray areas, trusting players to make tough decisions in complicated situations. My, my squad and I rested in the cave by the water last night, and as we were sleeping, we were ambushed by those miserable Zorips. I was so surprised, and it was so dark. I just got separated from everyone else. Look, I, I, I can't face those monsters alone, but I have to know if anyone else made it out. Of course he did. Sergeant Asui never has a thought he won't say out loud. So what did he tell you? That Captain Ruiki was sick? That I was paranoid? That I was a dumb baby? I heard it all often and loudly. Wait, if you found Sergeant Asui, why is he not here with you? What happened? At the end of the quest, you have a choice. When you confront well, Private Nalpi, if you believe the story he's told the voice you, acting, you can hand over the badges and let him in go the back In the gaming home. industry nowadays, Real battle isn't something you can prepare for, is it? <clears throat> Partly, it's not my fault. Because of the no, they, Oldest Gate tree. They should have never have camped in the cave. I'll take the badges. I'm going back to Thirdborn. But if you confront him, if you believe that he fled the site of the battle as an act of cowardice, then he might challenge you to a fight to reclaim his honor. Either way, when you return to town, you'll see the consequences of your actions and the choices you made during this quest. Creating an immersive experience like Avowed is anchored in the world we build. Art director Matt Hansen and the team have worked to create a unique, colorful, and dynamic visual style. From the outset, we knew that we wanted Avowed setting to feel rich, okay. Looks like it's much weird, better. and wonderful. We found inspiration in a <laughs> wide swath of Looks real like it's much world better cultures, right now. helping us create a unique RPG experience. By contrasting the vibrant with the dull, or verdant spaces with sickly ones, we can better deliver complex emotional experiences for our players. The Living Lands is a continent of untamed valleys with widely varied biomes, from luxuriant forests to volcanic wastes. And each of those regions itself is a conflux of storied landscapes. All of the regions have a lot of special things associated with them, but I have a deep place in my heart for Shatterscarp, as you're wandering the wastes of Shatterscarp, you might notice off in the distance a vibrant jewel of color. By transitioning from destitute, muted tones of a wasteland of sand and marching in towards a beautiful mm. oasis, there's the opportunity there for life, for adventure, and even a little danger. We hope you've enjoyed this look at Avowed. We're thrilled to share more about the game in the coming months, and we can't wait for you to explore the living lands when Avowed launches this fall. Unfortunately, <laughs> the first person view um, kind of took me off, regardless of how good the graphic is. But I'm going to pass this one. Thanks. <clears throat> All right. Next, Avowed Studio um will, will be released fall twenty twenty four. Okay, at least it's on like, it's on PC. Cool. Right. Who's next? Oh, Ninja Theory. Okay. You already got. Hi, I'm Don Matthews, studio head here at Ninja Theory in Cambridge, UK. We're now in the final months of development on Senua Saga Hellblade 2, and the team is working hard to bring you an unforgettable oh, journey. 
into Senua's I remember world seeing this in um, for survival. the game Rewards, we'll once I believe. again, combine high fidelity mm. and immersive presentation. I believe it was during the game wars where they I've, I've seen this. I've seen this. Things that we really care At least footages of it. We hope you care about too. I'm not sure if it's trailer or footage, but I definitely remember. I remember seeing this in the Game Awards. Senua is back with a new quest. She wants to stop the Vikings who raided her village right at their source, in Iceland. But not just her quest has changed. Senua herself has grown since the first Hellblade. She's made peace with her past and is oh, no so longer in fear of her visions and voices. Didn't know that. While the Furies are still her constant companions, she encounters new people along the way. Some of which will value her unique perspective, and others who will reject it. Little by little, this settlement became my tribe. In the game, Senua arrives in 10th century Iceland oh, on the train of the Vikings who have been enslaving her people. In the story, uh, we're trying to be as faithful to history as we can up to a point. Fact, establishing a solid framework and then building more surreal exactly. elements on top. Senua will face up to giants who have plunged the land into chaos and which in turn has seen the rise of the Joiga, a violent threat that has swept through the settlements that she'll discover. Senua will make new enemies and also new allies who will come to see her unique perspective as a beacon of hope. And she'll discover along with us how this viewpoint can have its advantages. Senua is a Celtic warrior who experiences psychosis, seeing things that other people don't, hearing voices, and having unique beliefs about the world around her. To bring Senua's perspective of the world to life in a truthful way, we have once again worked closely with Professor Paul Fletcher at the University of Cambridge, as well as people with lived experience of psychosis. What does that mean? What does that mean? It's terrifying. Players will find themselves traversing beautiful and hostile environments, seeking answers from patterns and signs oh, that Senua sees in her own unique way, and battling through encounters with enemies that will push Senua to her limits. Pleasure book of City over. The premiere, to be precise. On Saga, so once I'm done with this, I'll be checking out the special level. program. With a new motion capture space, a bigger stage team, a stunt crew, and a new cast. We spent a lot of time planning the motion capture shoots, thinking of what events would be good to bring into this fight. Like, how can we make this fight feel different from the previous fight? We have all new combat for the sequel. One of our key goals was the ability to actually tell a story throughout it. It does feel very different from the first game, but it's very brutal and you're very invested in it. Senua isn't a superhero. She's fighting for survival, and we want the player to feel her struggle in every step of her journey. Okay. We want the player to always feel like they just scraped through, just survived it. Mel knows Senua better than anyone, better than I do. Her instincts are amazing and she really doesn't need much help from me. On stage, our main focus is storytelling. So I get to watch the actors and see all the beautiful expressions on their faces. And then I have to wait a little while and then I get to see that all again in game, in costume, on location, everything. It's, it's a great experience, a great process. Every discipline in the studio is unified in achieving a deep level of immersion to help suspend your disbelief and pull you into Senua's story. We were lucky enough to do a few reference gathering trips in Iceland. You have to be there. The, the sense of scale, everything is incredible. And you see a scene or you see a small section of the game and you're like, yeah, that, that works, that's amazing. Senua experiences reality differently, and a part of this manifests in the voices she hears. She will collapse. She will collapse. These voices come to life through binaural audio, which provides a good representation of this type of auditory hallucinations. As we focus on immersion, uh, binaural audio is perfect for this because through headphones, you 
surround yourself in a three-dimensional space. In the first game, we only applied to the voices that Senua listens in her head. In this game, through spatial audio technology and uh, some extra little things within the game, there is music that is binaural. Every single sound has the potential to be binaural, so everything is specialized around you and it's a very beautiful experience. Music is a strange language in the sense that it speaks to our emotions fast and deep. It's not only about quality, it's about personality. So when you listen to Hellblade, you know it's Hellblade. On the music we are working with Heilung, which for me is a personal privilege because I really admire them. We feel their craft, their depth, their meaning in the yep, music. Yeah, I was right. It really connects with our game. This and game was some shown during special. last year's we are also Game working Awards. With a heavy metal singer, throat singers, and our very own Furies. They sing so beautiful, and we add that binaural touch of music. So this all creates a very immersive and a very special and unique experience. But to be fair. Speaking of Our mission the game here awards, in right, is to craft life-changing done with game-changing tech. To promote and game, uh, saga, the music Hellblade of the game is better is by bringing Senua in the next next nominations of the deliver something really meaningful for our players. Audio of the year really or sound design or some kind right? of best really music, to what she's going such through, as the likes of Soken and Yes, Nori. And let them play right? the songs she, that, has, that was nominated in, through uh, all of world, in through the best, ninja. at least in the so best music category. We all are Senua, and we are creating this character that grows and grows and grows and grows and, grows and keep growing and keep changing. So that makes it real. I'm so proud because I'm already at a point where I appreciate here the Ninja music. Theory are putting into Senua Saga help. Partly because I. Our hope is to not Most only of the games that I've played as of play, lately are to craft an experience RPGs. that leaves you thinking and feeling. From our combat gameplay through to our action set pieces, from our cinematic scenes to our puzzle solving, everything is crafted in service of Senua's journey. A journey that you and when can it comes to on, on May 21st. Memories being made in, uh, in games, right? Music definitely had a part in that particular in the memories that you've made while playing the game which is which was one of the reason why i'm having so much fun him playing atelier riser 2 as a uh, as of this moment because the music in huh? wait square enix I was talk. I was about to talk about um, game music. Is this uh, the mana, the new mana game they were talking about? Greetings, Xbox players. My name is Masaru Oyamada, producer yep. of the Mana new series Mana series Square game, Square which was announced during the Game Awards as well. Second day, it's Visions of Mana. Xbox ユーザーの皆さんに約 just for your information, I have never ever played any mana games before. Just for your information, I have never ever played any mana games before. Just for your information, Okay, 
そしてこの ああ、いいスピンオンエスパイナルファンタジーガイデン。これまで自分が携わってきた人では、それらをどうやって当時の技術で表現できているのでバトル中は、モンスターたちの技術を even though I, I played Final Fantasy before, as I mentioned earlier, I never ever played a mana game before. I actually know. Ah. Uh, it's actually Pickle. Nothing new. Because Atelier Riser has this, guy, has this feature as well. <laughs> Atelier Riser 2, to be precise. 今作のマスコットキャラクターになるくらい可愛い動物にしたいという漠然とした思いがありました。その上で、容疑者テリアの毛並み、見た目はアルマジュのよく似た戦山校や古代エジプト神のアヌビスの子供といった具体的なイメージ
Mana Visions of Mana available on Xbox Series and PC. Huh. Is it not available on, on the PlayStation? Hold on, let me switch the, the, the quality because there's lag. Let me switch the, switch the quality to 2K, see if if we get rid of the lag frames. Hello, and welcome to Oxide Games. We founded the studio in 2013 with our decades of personal experience building some of the most beloved strategy games of all time, like Civilization V. We came together to create something new and innovative uh. in a genre we all love. Ara History Untold is the game we've dreamt of making. Ara is an homage to historical gamers, strategy gamers, 4X if. gamers, it if my chair gameplay, is a gaming chair, world, where you'll explore the I world, would not hesitate expand your to nation, spin it govern because, your people, uh, and engage with your rivals on the international stage. This is just not my cup just of more of the tea, same. man. Really with so. Ara, we wanted to challenge some of the preconceived this notions of the This is just not part of my real house. Push it forward house. in a modern, empowering, and truly compelling and approachable way. For example, we have over 100 instruments on display in the office, which are all things that we purchased oh in order to gosh. add to the soundtrack and expand the game and make it really good <laughs> hi dan that's dan we started in his basement yeah, it's just, been an just, amazing process just, to see from just concept jump to right in, dude. we started small building a robust game engine questioning our design assumptions and prototyping out features rediscovering what made us fall in love with strategy games in the first place the end result is aura the historical grand strategy game that presents a living world where you can rule how you want to rule and chart your own path to becoming the most prestigious nation. Let me go grab some water. For Ara, we knew we need well, well, deep well, systems let this thing run, that encourage run exploration course. and give players the power to experiment and make meaningful strategic choices while still having agency over their playstyle. We also wanted to explore more in different parts of history and give players from around the world the chance to see the game reflect their unique perspective and not just ours. And finally, we knew that for players to feel the impact of their decisions, they would need to see their choices reflected in the game world itself, not just through numbers on a menu. One of the first differences you'll see when you dive into Aura is what we call the living world. It's a procedurally generated alternate Earth, bursting with life, an intuitive, authentic, and immersive space, a blank canvas for players to paint the society of their dreams. The living world isn't just a map. It reflects the choices players make over the course of the game. They can see everything from the settling of the wilderness to cultural influence on the uh, architecture over time to the thousands of citizens living their lives and reacting to the changes. We want players to feel like they're truly occupying the world, leading their people as they thrive and grow. Core to the vision of Ara is our philosophy of rule how you want to rule. And no feature better exemplifies this than the prestige system. To win a game of Ara, players will compete with their rivals to build the most influential, impressive, and important nation the world has ever known. This is measured by prestige, the player's score that proves their worth as a leader. The prestige system gives players the chance to decide what kind of leader they want to be. Do they want to pursue great works of arts and culture? Military might. Scientific advancement. The choice is theirs. In Aura, there are no set victory conditions. Players get to decide what is most important to them His and focus and prioritize on those game. goals while still being able to win the game. Personally, when I play Aura, I like to build triumphs. Triumphs are our collection of incredible monuments and architectural achievements from throughout human history. Like the Great Pyramid of Giza, they're hard to build, but worth it giving huge prestige bonuses and game-changing abilities to the nation that constructs them. 
Another aspect of Aura that I am personally excited about is our crafting well, system. Well, personally, I don't mind doing system stuff that is a challenge to the player that they that generally took, won't see often. It takes me a tons of effort. Balancing, gathering the right and things, turning them into the, uh, the tools that you need, and then the finally end is, getting to the outcome and reward of something You can really like see the results of the end product. Triumph just changes the challenge that exists in Aura compared to other 4X games. Crafting plays out in Aura at a national For example, scale, with players honing and combining the natural resources they harvest into all manner a of goods and components. Those are the foundations for everything, quality, from international trade, to improving their cities and citizens' to lives, like what, maybe days and even manufacturing weeks. the weapons necessary and then to draft military units. Craft the crafting the, system in Aura encourages thoughtful advantage in planning. It rewards players who can see the strategic outcome of all their collected decisions and not just the individual ones. I'm proud of the work that's gone into our system simultaneously and turning into a tool that the player can use to make their own decisions. I'm proud of the work that's gone into our simultaneous turn system. Many strategy games have players alternate, taking turns and Unlike reacting to their opponent's moves. Game in Aura, where all players' actions are resolved at the same time. It, this rewards it's been players' like, what, ability two to navigate years and four months to predict since and strategically plan one for one game, scenarios in the moment. And I still haven't this got that one piece of real. the in a typical okay, strategy game. Once your turn is finished, you have to wait for, for my a long favorite time. With simultaneous turns, time. generally speaking, those times are very low. Two you get to keep playing the game of and stay engaged and rather than having I still those periods get of downtime. The one where you're piece of the artifact that I want for it's my favorite It's not easy character. sifting through all of history and picking what to include. I will not mention what game I'm talking about, but I, perspective. So I hope the hints that I mentioned earlier on be pretty much know what I'm talking about. Where this approach really shines is in our leaders. Leaders are so often seen as military personnel or prominent government figures but leaders come in so many different forms they're thought leaders scientific and cultural prodigies and many more each leader in aura has a number of special abilities determined by their personality traits as well as a powerful and unique leader trait informed by their contributions to world history with a diverse global roster we know players will find leaders that they will want to play and even a few that may surprise them with how fun it is when those leaders are handed the reins of power for us at Oxide, player feedback is the only way to really understand what you're making. It gives us that priceless perspective from the people we're making Aura for, you. Building the game alongside real players has given us that critical player feedback. In the end, we believe this makes for a deeper connection between the players and the game. One of my favorite examples is when we first introduced the concept of dangerous wildlife to the game. It turns out, in our first iteration, it was maybe a little bit too aggressive or disruptive. We knew we should probably make a change when one of our insiders made a forum post that was just Cougars, 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 I hate cougars! Someone get these feline demons away from me. I'm happy to report, based on more recent feedback, that I think we ended up in a good place with the overall threat level of mountain lions to a player's citizenry. It's been years of hard work to bring you a strategy experience like no other. And we're so excited that we can finally see the finish line. We can't wait for players to get their hands on the game later this year. But the launch of Aura is only the beginning. We are going to maintain our insider program after the release date and continue to listen to players and support the game into the future. On behalf of everyone at Oxide Games, thank you for joining us today. We can't wait for you to play Aura and to create your own history. And this game is available only on PC. PC Game Pass. Never heard of it. Whatever. Alright. What's the last one? Because the last one looks like... um, What's his name again? Indiana Jones. Hey and welcome to Uppsala, Sverige. Here at Machine Games. We are really excited to finally be able to share our work on Indiana Jones. Since Indiana the first and the came out, of the Lost Indiana Ark. Jones has always represented the ultimate adventure. And the Temple of Doom. Even today, it's one of the most iconic franchises in the last in pop movie. Culture. I think this is the third movie. In this game, you aren't just playing as Indy, you are Indiana Jones. You will see through his eyes and experience a journey that we hope lives up to the proud legacy. Hey, was that even an Indiana Jones, Jones when prior Todd to this? Howard first told us about his vision for the game, we knew we would be a very good fit to help bring it to life. I've wanted to make an Indiana Jones game forever. I'd had this idea 
for what it would be like and the story, what Indy was going after, what period of his life it was in, what kind of arc he was going to have. And as the years went on, I thought, who would be like the best studio in the world to make this? And it was my friends at Machine Games. I can remember pitching Lucasfilm on the game and being, you know, a little bit nervous because, look, it's, you know, Indiana Jones. And their response was just overwhelmingly positive. And just that excitement has bled through the whole project. And they have just been so trusting and supportive of everything that we want to do with the game. It's been a long time. I've been a fan of this my whole life, and I couldn't be more excited to show you what the team here has been up to. Let's take our first look at the new Indiana Jones game. Let Did me I tell guess? you what you are missing, Dr. Jones. While you were playing your pointless game, I was playing you. If you're wondering if Maybe you should have built yourself a life of meaning instead of ending up here, dead and forgotten in the sands of Africa. If Harrison Ford is not voicing um, Indiana Jones, then I'm I'm out. Myths, history, just different ways to interpret the past. Thousands of years of humanity's thoughts and beliefs. Oh crap, it's first person? Just uh, waiting. Why does it have to be first person? Just run away from your problems, Indiana. Watch me. But suddenly I would prefer the game to be a third person view to be made. Throughout history, mankind has built sites of great spiritual significance. If you were to draw a line, through these ancient sites around the globe, you get a perfectly aligned circle. But at least they got the music right. But is he really Harrison Ford voicing as in the other jokes? With these guys before. Trust me, it ain't a walk in the park. Okay, then. Let's see if you can keep up. What do you mean if I can keep up? I mean, the name of the face bottle, but... Doesn't sound like cheap. I might be wrong. Patron of the fallen angels. Protector of the... Chukui Mani. The Great Circle. <laughs> Indiana Jones and the Great Circle. You have any idea how old that was? Okay, that was definitely. Indiana Jones is such an iconic character, and he means so much to so many people. Everyone here at the studio has their own I mean, stories been a long, and memories. A long running, um, Most of us grew up with his so adventures far. and have been fans of the movies and the character for years. He's a brilliant archaeologist, he's a charismatic everyman, he's passionate and determined. And for us, he's synonymous with adventure. Now we have the opportunity to tell a new Indiana Jones story for a modern gaming audience. Our game is all about putting you in Indy's shoes, letting you see and feel what he sees and feels. For us at Machine Games, so, so we do which that is why they go for first person, first -person the ideal view. perspective to bring you into the rich, exciting and interactive world we've built. We believe that being up close and personal to the adventure is key, making each action feel like your own. Whether it's cracking your whip, solving puzzles in ancient temples, or seeing your knuckles go bloody in a fist fight. All of these moments are much more intense in first person. 
But we still want you to have those moments. Seeing his iconic silhouette with a hat, the whip, and so for things like cutscenes and environmental traversal, we pull the camera back for a third person view. Indiana Jones and the Great Circle is set between Raiders of the Lost Ark and The Last Crusade. Oh. Yeah. When our game begins, Indiana is working at Marshall College. He wakes up in the middle of the night to the sounds of a break-in and rushes to confront the thief in the college museum. The mysterious giant of a man makes off with what seems to be a historically insignificant artifact, sparking Indiana's curiosity. Who the hell are you? Following the trail, Indiana heads to the Vatican, hoping to learn why this particular relic was stolen, and discovers that things aren't what they appear. He starts pulling at the strings of a mystery, and it all unravels until he has no choice but to see it through to the end, whatever the end may be. Let's play to Rome. Stop. Need help. Stop. Leave me in fashion. Stop. Okay. We always talk about how clever Indiana Jones is. That had to be one of our guiding principles when we were thinking about the type of game we were making. It wouldn't be Indy if he wasn't using his wits to get through the situation. The most authentic Indiana Jones experience we can make is the one that makes you think first. <laughs> Sure, there will be of course, there's uh, some puzzle solving in the in the energy of taken from a disarmed god. But I think most of the time you'll have more fun, and to be honest, a more genuine indie experience by finding more clever ways to solve a problem. We always want to be offering more solutions, whether it's trying a different path through the environment to get around enemies, observing enemy patrols and using them to your advantage, or oh, using the tools crap. at your disposal. Like the whip. It's an amazing global adventure. I suck at stealth. You your journey. We have I really suck at stealth. In this journey, we'll take him to the uh. forgotten temples of Sukhothai, the pyramids of Egypt, Ooh. the snow-peaked Himalayas, and beyond. We look carefully at each location and the time period the game is set in, and we're trying to make it as authentic and accurate as possible. We love creating rich, vibrant worlds, and this game we also had a goal of making it feel like a true cinematic Indiana Jones adventure. One of the biggest ways to do that is with the music. John Williams is the original composer for the indie films, mm -hmm. and we're really lucky to have found Gordy Hubb, a composer who's been able to capture Williams' essence with his score for The Great Circle. We also take a very movie-like approach to things like cinematics. We're very physical with our production style. We use a lot of stunt actors. Things like this help us bridge the gap between making a game and making a movie. And of course, our characters do a lot to help bring the world to life as well. Next to Indy, Gina is our other main protagonist. Where Indy is pursuing answers just for the sake of curiosity, Gina has a personal stake in getting to the bottom of the core mystery. Gina is an investigative reporter who has a lot riding on this adventure. She's been tracking a lead for some time, and now she's found an ally in this determined American professor. Their paths are intertwined, and they'll need each other in order to get to the bottom of this mystery. Okay, now, let's see if we can keep up. Fine. What do you mean if I keep up? We always love our villains and think we might have found our favorite one yet in Emmerich Voss. He's this intensely psychological man. He's obsessed with the human mind and manipulating it. He's highly intelligent and the perfect foil for Andy. They're both brilliant people compelled by their passions and obsessions, but driven down wildly different roads. He creeps up on you and gets under your skin like he gets under in the skin. It's captivating. <laughs> One of our models for Indiana Jones and the Great Circle is adventure first. But in every indie adventure, there are always those moments where he finds himself in the action. That's been one of those balancing acts for us, and we've ended up with this sort of hybrid experience that mixes melee combat, stealth, and gunplay. How you approach any given situation is up to you. You may choose to sneak around an enemy patrol, or maybe you'll just pick up a shovel and whack them on the back of their head. 
Oof. And when you can't use your wits, you got in this most iconic tool. The Just like you see in the movies, one of our goals has been to make the whip as fun and multi-purpose as possible. We want it integrated into every aspect of the game. You can use it as a traversal tool to make your way around the environment. You can use it as a distraction. And yes, you can absolutely use it in combat. Everything you'd expect from in this whip, and hopefully a little bit more. Puzzles are a key feature in our game. The spirit of discovery is so important to Indiana Jones. Obviously, there are a handful of puzzles on the main path, but I mean, of a lot of puzzles puzzle, are optional um, and are just there for the players who want to experience there's them. There's puzzles in the Indiana Jones game. Small secrets and hidden puzzles that blend right in with their surroundings. One thing I love about our game is the level of interactivity that we have. We have this world of mystery where anything could potentially hide a secret. The more you look, the more you'll discover. So yeah, level design matters in this game. I want to thank you all for joining us for our big reveal of Indiana Jones and the Great Circle. Machine Games is known for creating these roller coaster experiences with huge set pieces, surprising twists, and immersive narratives. It's exciting for us that we have been able to stay so true to the Indiana Jones franchise and create such an authentic experience while still being able to showcase what makes us us. We are making a game for everyone whether you are very familiar with the franchise or not. Because at the heart of Indiana Jones is an incredible adventure, and I think that's something everyone wants to be part of. I'm also very excited to announce that Indiana Jones and the Great Circle will be coming later this year, and we cannot wait to share more soon. So, the game will be released later this year. Xbox, PC, and Game Pass. Okay. I think that's pretty much all of it. Unless they have another surprise. Nope, oh, I think that's pretty much all of it. Is it animals, children, and game developers? <laughs> Our mission here at Ninja Theory is to craft life-changing art with game-changing tech. Core to the vision of Ara is our philosophy of rule how you want to rule. Stay happy! <laughs> Creating an immersive experience like Avowed is anchored in the world we build. You aren't just playing as Indy, you are Indian Jones. My name oh. is Masaru Oyamada. That's the end of Xbox Developer Direct of 2024. So yeah, I think the only thing that um, that caught my attention the most is definitely um, the Mana series. But also at the same time, I'm not sure whether I'll be playing that game day one. Overall, right, most of the games in this year's Developer Direct is kind of like, eh, it's just not my cup of tea. I might, I probably might try out Indiana Jones, but then again, personally, I would prefer Indiana Jones to be a third-person view. To be very honest, 
or at the very least right you can either switch to a first person view and in a third person view third person i'm sorry a first person view and a third person view you can switch in betweens that's why i would personally prefer but we'll see we'll see